everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, and welcome. Got a little conversation that I want to have. I have had three conversations in the past week where individuals have told me, and a total of five conversations in the last two weeks, where individuals have told me, one, that they got their mortgage discharged. Now, one person got their mortgage discharged by listening to someone who combined information for me and others, okay? Just simply sending in some paperwork, literally. Am I gonna tell you guys what that is? I am not able to because it's not totally my information. So yes, a lot of the information we talked about years ago, right there, but other information is not mine. This is based on the research the other person did, which is usually what happens. I'll put some information out there. I can't put out everything because, yeah, there are some issues. But the persons will do extra research, and they will accomplish remedy. Then we have another person who was able to go down to the financial institution, bring the paperwork that was suggested, and lo and behold, they're speaking and put in touch with the right people. This is not no fluke. This is not somebody giving me a pipe dream. This is me not being able to tell you everything because they're still working out the details. Okay? So I don't want to interfere with that at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever you think, it's not the problem. You don't know the details, I do. So I don't want to interfere with that. But they listened. They followed the instructions that they were given. They did the research. I, I point you guys in the right direction. I tell you what you should be looking up. I even show you what you should be looking up. And you guys don't do it. Because you're looking for somebody to give you the fish, to give you the lake, to give you the pond, to give you the river, to give you the stream, to give you the ocean, to give you the pole, to give you the boat, to give you the laborers to do the work for you. You're looking for Jesus to come and tell you to cast your net on the left. Oh, no, no. Have your servants cast the net on the left side so that you can pull in a bunch of fish. That ain't me. I ain't Jesus, people. I ain't gonna tell you to cast your net on the left side or the right side. I'm gonna tell you where to go by the tackle, where to go by the bait, where to go by the rod, where to go by the boat. I'm gonna tell you where to go acquire the items. It's up to you to figure out which items to acquire, how to acquire them, and how much to pay for them. I know you don't want to do that type of research. So when people start asking you questions about where'd you get this, where'd you get that, who told you to do this, who told you to do that, you need to be able to answer those questions for yourself. You need to be able to respond on your own square. If you're just doing things, following a process, the only thing you can say, well, I followed this process on the internet. It doesn't work like that. And you're causing a lot of problems by operating that way. So no, I will not contribute to such operations. Then I had uh, two people call me last week. And they called me to tell me that the case is over, that they don't have to do anything else. All I did was uh, help them do a couple of motions during a consult. We worked on, I think on average, it's about four different motions for each person. They're all different. Every case is different, so the motions are different but still the same construct. The title of the motion is the issue. Each motion is the same. Ladies and gentlemen, motions don't change. A motion to dismiss is still the same format as a motion for rehearing, or a motion for reconsideration, or a motion to vacate, or a motion for default judgment, or a motion for summary judgment, which is the same as default. I mean, not default, but um, dismissal. Okay, or demure. They're all, it's, it's just the same, they're all the same document, just different words on the inside. That's all people have to understand. A civil complaint is the same thing as a writ of certiary. Same thing, same thing, same format, just different words. But you don't need to understand that. You just need to understand, uh, when you understand law, when you understand the facts, when you understand how things work, then you can make things work for you. The one thing I've said to people is, yeah, they're gonna test you. Yeah, they're gonna sit up there and make it seem like you don't know what you're doing, but you are gonna have to fight. And I tell this to people all the time. I have one guy, he, he contacted me after he had already been foreclosed on. 
and we went into court, and the court just ruled against him, and he did the appeal. We did the motion for stay. We did the bond, all of that, took care of all of that. And he told me, he says, you know what? I'm going to walk away for the moment because they need a break. He says, but I'm not going nowhere. He says, they can have this for right now. I said, let them have it. You're, you're on appeal. Let them have it. The issue you're on appeal is good enough for them to grant you the appeal, which means they're going to have to return the house. So let them go ahead and do the repairs on the house. Literally, that's what our conversation was yesterday. And now he's going to go after them. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the thing. I want you all to look up something. It's called a credit transaction. Pay attention. A credit transaction. And look up that phrase in reference to a loan. Each one of your loans were done via credit application. You applied for credit. And you don't realize that, but you applied for credit. And the bank didn't lend you credit, they gave the credit to the buyer. I mean, excuse me, the seller. And you just have to pay back the value of the credit that was given to the seller. All right. Then I had another person contact me regarding a consult, letting me know that their case was dismissed and that they don't have to worry about anything. They don't have to move. They have their house. Another person contacted me the week before, letting me know that her matter was dismissed when we did the motions to the court and she doesn't have to move and she doesn't have to worry. Both of them are looking to sell their property now because they can without being hit with some lien or anything. All right. It's not going to be the same for every single person. Every single situation is different. All of these people talking about, I got remedy. I can get you your house in less than five words. I can name that too. That's the stupid stuff. I don't deal with stupidity. I deal with reality. Okay. I don't deal with stupidity. I deal with reality. And reality is the document that was produced for you guys, you have been warned. The video, go ahead and watch the video. Okay, there are two documents that were produced. The small claims lawsuit. I'm about to, probably today, redo the small claims lawsuit for automobiles. And then I'll do one for student loans. Primarily for our clients, but we're going to put that out for everybody. And all you're doing is going after the bond. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> you receive credit. There was no funding. The bank is not losing any money. Now, here's here's just for you to get something to hold on to. Let me prove to you the bank is not losing any money. When you borrow money, the banks receive money from the Federal Reserve, so they create an account in your name, put the money in, it's a positive. Pay attention, they get the fractional reserve that money. Fractional reserve is where they get to keep loaning out the same amount of money exponentially. And up until the 11th of March this year, they got to do it at 100%. So they got to do it at 100% without having to have reserves. Lord have mercy. So the bank is never out of any money. Pay attention. The bank is never out of any money. They cannot document a substantial loss because they're making a profit all the way to the bank, so to speak. So you're not harming them. They're not being harmed. So they don't have a right to foreclose because they cannot prove injury. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> this is a secret. And once you understand it, ladies and gentlemen, then you'll understand why certain documents work with certain wording. Just go back over this information, do your research on it. I promise you, if you do your research, you will save a whole lot of time, a whole lot of trouble. Look, I got to go. I have a meeting that's taking place right now, but we'll, we'll, we'll get back in the future, okay? Y'all take care.